I know why we're here. A rescue op? Save the dinosaurs from an island that's about to explode? What could go wrong? Blue is alive. You raised her. <laughs> Hi, Colin. Hi. Um, you are you were the director of the first uh, Jurassic World. You are the producer of this one. It's easier to talk about a um, movie when you are the producer, not a director. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I am a producer. I, I'm the writer with with Derek Connolly, and so as I, I feel the same level of responsibility creatively as I did the first time. I mean, uh, and so there's always that sense of, uh, of course, like we, we want people to be interested in what we're doing and to be following along. I think that on a day to day basis while you're making the film, uh, yeah, it's a little bit less stressful uh, to be the producer and the writer than it is to be the director. <laughs> The big surprise of the trailer of Jurassic World The Fallen Kingdom is that only shows the scenes for the first half of the movie. So how do you decide how much to show, how much to hide of the movie? Well, honestly, I don't get to decide that. And that's that's a ultimately a decision of, of what marketing needs to do in order to hopefully get people to come see the film. And there's a a classic push and pull between directors and marketing as far as how much they're going to show. Uh, but, you know, I, I really have a lot of respect for the guys at Universal and they, they do a great job and, and we've had a, a a really good give and take on this movie as far as, you know, what we're going to share and what we're going to hold back. Cause there, there really are, there are secrets and surprises in this movie that, that we are going to hold back that you're not going to know about, I promise. And it's difficult because it, these years are usual the spoilers and rumors on the internet. So, how difficult it is to keep secrets in a movie so big as Jurassic World of Fallen Kingdom? I mean, in the end, it's really about what you choose to show. I mean, sometimes there's leaks, but uh, it, you really just have to be very judicious and careful uh, if you want people to have uh, an experience that's that's full of, of surprise and intrigue. And uh, that's why people go to the movies. It's, it's why people watch uh, really any kind of filmed entertainment is to be taken to some place uh, that is full of questions that they want to know the answers to. And if you give them all the answers, uh, it's going to be much harder to, to entertain them. Uh, the trailer has a great reaction of the audience and social network. The, the people are, are joining uh, the, the trailer. So, but in your case, which is your favorite part of the trailer? All the people have a favorite part, yeah. a favorite moment of the trailer. I mean, personally, my favorite part is is when the question of the movie uh, is presented. Uh, you know, these do these animals have the rights uh, to that other animals on the planet have, or do we let them go extinct? Uh, while you're seeing, you know, Ian Malcolm is the moral authority, uh, and uh, you know, and the the little toy at the gift shop turn, you know, revealing itself as a copy. Like that to me is just the heart of, of the Jurassic franchise. I love that stuff. Uh, you told me for the first uh, Jurassic World that Steven Spielberg was a big figure for you, like a mentor for you. Uh, are you trying to do the same thing with Juan Antonio, uh, trying to help you in this in this case? I, I definitely, you know, I consider J.A. a peer. I, I'm not a mentor to him, and he's someone I admire very much. I think that what I have been able to do is is give him a level of support that I know a director needs, uh, a producer who's able to fight for their vision, uh, make sure they're able to realize it. There's, again, there's so much, there's so much money involved in making these films uh, that it, it's not that it's constant conflict, but it's, it's constantly making a case as creatively as to why we need to do this. And because the first film was successful, uh, it allowed me to be able to, to be that voice and, and, and a certain level of, of of, uh, of creative authority that I didn't have in the first movie uh, and trust uh, because the first one had worked. So if, if Jay and I agreed that we want to do something, I could go to the studio and say, look, we're going to need an extra couple hundred, hundred grand to, to, to do this. And you have um, a strange uh, year because the bad reception of the Book of Henry and later the parting in Star Wars. But Jurassic World is like your home. How do you feel in, in, in this uh, return into the franchise? I feel, I feel like I'm home. I do. Uh, you know, I, we, uh, filmmaking is a tough, a tough business. Uh, and when you put yourself on the line, 
uh, as a creative person, uh, you're, you're opening yourself up to, to heartbreak and to, and to some rough moments, but uh, to be able to have something that uh, I care about this much and, so, and to be able to work in a studio and, and for a producer who uh, has been so supportive and, and really allowed me to, to shape uh, you know, a trilogy of films and to, to hire someone like Jay Bayona to work with, uh, I, I feel, I feel uh, so encouraged uh, as a creative person and uh, it, it makes me feel good. So it's like a warm fire with like a turtleneck and a little bowl of tomato soup.